Welcome to another art journal step-by-step -step with Artful Geek Girl for the art journal page entitled Courage. It started out with some watercolor circles that I cut out with my wafer-thin nesting circle dies by We Are Memory Keepers. I then took some Versamark ink and stamped it onto the largest of the circles. And using some Recollection Snow White embossing powder, I simply embossed that in white, knowing that that would act as a resist with the watercolors that I intended to use on each one of these circles. The stamp was from a Tim Holtz set, and it says, Courage is being who you are in a world that expects you to be someone else. I prepared all of my circles. Well, this is a tiny one, but I prepared them all first by putting on a layer of water. And then I started watercoloring with my Artist Loft uh, watercolor set. It's just an inexpensive set that I got at Michael's. And I just did a simple wash with this circle. I started with some pink and added some purple and just kind of gave it that wash effect. And this is what I did with all of them until I got to my final circle, uh, the one that I had stamped on. And I wanted you to be able to see the way that this resists the watercolor. Again, I started out by adding water to the paper first and then getting my paint rather watery too so that I could just kind of push that onto the paper and smoosh it around with my, with my brush. Um, and that's a real technical term, the smoosh, but that's more or less what I did. I picked it up a couple of times and kind of let it drip into different places and I added purples and blues and then kind of a teal color there after a bit. There were a couple of points where uh, it got really, really wet and I just dabbed it with a paper towel. But you'll see how now as I'm getting all of the color on there, you can see the text of the stamp and how the embossing uh, embossed area is just resisting that watercolor. So it makes it very nice, especially as it dries. So then I went to my art journal pages and with some distress paint in Wild Honey, I started on the outside edges and putting the paint on and then taking a baby wipe, I blended it in so that it covered my page. And then I repeated the process on the other side. Now you can see here where some inks and paint have come through the center of my art journal. That doesn't bother me. Um, I'm not such a purist that, that the stuff seeping through bothers me, but if it is something that bothers you, you can always cover your spine before you start any of this. You can cover that spine area with some washi tape um, or even uh, some masking tape. Once I finished with the wild honey, then I took some distress paint in spiced marmalade. It's a little bit darker and more of an orange color and I started adding that as an accent on the outer edges, again blending it with a baby wipe. Now this entire layout actually started with me sketching a girl with a whimsical face. I, I've always been someone who's liked that look. Didn't think that I could do it and then on a snowy Sunday, snowy Saturday, I happened to try it and this girl came out pretty well. I colored her with my watercolor pencils but I didn't really like the way the hair came out. So you see me here taking some of that wild honey and some of that spice marmalade and going over the hair with the distress paint. I think this is something that those of you that are art journaling should always keep in mind. The beauty of doing an art journal 
is the fact that you are free to explore. So this was something that I wasn't even I wasn't even aware that I was able to do as far as the faces and I just happened to sit down. It was snowy. It was cozy. Uh, I played around and I actually came up with something that I really was happy with and then it just kind of spoke to me um, that and finding that stamp quote uh, just kind of fit together. It was kind of the courage for me to try and draw these faces and so um, kind of fit together really well and that was the purpose, the plan for this whole art journal page. So you can see here I also took some antique bronze distress paint with that little bit of metallic shimmer and I'm just going to put some highlights or low lights actually um, in her hair here. I just took that baby wipe with that antique bronze and kind of tapped it in there a little bit too to give it a little bit of texture. You can see I set up the way that I wanted my circles to appear on the page and where I wanted her to go. And then I decided that I was going to spritz the page and her hair uh, with a little bit of water because as you know distress paint will react with water so it gives a little bit of a, a mottled effect and I really I really liked that effect. It was very light. I just spritzed it very lightly with water and then dabbed it off with a paper towel. Then I wanted to do a background and I actually uh, got this stamp ready with all of the art brushes and I stamped it with Memento um, cocoa, dark cocoa ink and uh, put it all over my page to make a background. Now I'm also going to do a couple of other things so it's really not going to show up a whole lot especially with the size of the circles and the size of my whimsical girl but I just like the idea that um, I had all of this art stuff in the background and it 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 ended up working out well when I was done with that it's a stampenda stamp when I was done with that I went and I found a spatter uh, stamp that I also had and decided that in those spots that uh, don't have any of the, the stamp work in it I was just going to put a little bit of spatter in there on, in the same color. Then taking my Crafters Workshop Harlequin template I'm also going to take some Dilutions White spray and to spray through that and I don't care that it um, is going to spread or and I'm even actually going to dab some of it off. I really just wanted that white effect in the background. So what I did is on one side I sprayed through the holes and on the other side I flipped it over. Uh, and it's going to it's going to act a lot like in my previous um, videos where I've used gesso to kind of lighten it. I used the ink this time. And now I'm going to take my Faber-Castell gel medium and I'm going to apply everything to my pages. Now I'm not only applying it to glue down my pieces that are going on this art journal page, but I'm also covering the entire page and that's because I'm going to do some pen work afterwards and I find that if I apply it to the whole page it goes a lot smoother as far as adding pen work and also 
uh, using the India ink pens to add shadows behind or color behind, um, I can uh, smooth that out and it works really well. So everything gets a nice coverage of the gel medium by Faber-Castell. And I found that the Faber-Castell gel medium is kind of a semi-matte. It's not as matte as some of the others that I use. So uh, that was another reason that I kind of used it on this. It gave it a, a little bit more of a slick surface uh, when I was done. Then I found Courage in a dictionary and I tore it out, just ripped it out and added it to the top of my page above the girl because that is actually going to be the title of this layout. And once it w everything was dry, and always make sure it's dry or you'll ruin your pens, I took my pit pens, they're Black India ink and they're by Faber-Castell and I just went over the edges and just added details. And it's amazing what a difference just adding these thin black lines make. I also decided to make uh, some borders around the circles and it was kind of a wobbly uh, border. Uh, it kind of uh, was artsy and wobbly and doubled up in some places. just adding that. Now I'm going to take my white Sakura Jelly Roll pen and I'm going to add highlights in different places starting with her eyes and then you'll see me add uh, her chin, her nose, along her nose, her forehead and then also some marks within the circles. Here you see I picked the pit pen back up again because I decided I was going to add some eyelashes.
Now I'm adding a little bit of shading with a warm gray Copic marker. Adding some pink to her cheeks with another Copic in tea rose. Now you saw me try with a warm gray um, India ink pen, a big brush marker by Faber-Castell, and it was a little bit too dark for the light of her skin. So later you'll see that I fixed my mistake. But then I decided to pick up the Faber-Castell big brush white marker in order to uh, get a little heftier line, uh, both adding some highlights to her face and then you'll see me do it on the circles and in her hair as well. Now I took that warm gray marker that I wasn't so happy about on her skin and I tried it to, as far as popping out those letters on the stamp and honestly I didn't like it there either. So I decided to go back with the white marker and add a few more lines and not smudge them quite so much so that they were a little bit brighter. So I've got some smudged white highlights and then I've got these brighter ones. And then I took another Faber-Castell big brush marker in a, in a brown and added some low lights. What I'm trying to attempt to do here is to add some depth to her hair. It's obvious that I still have a lot of work to do as far as uh, the faces and especially the hair, but um, I just kind of went with it. Now I'm taking that warm gray again, and because it's on that uh, gel medium background, I can do that line and then smudge it so that it really kind of shadows and makes the girl pop off the page. It makes all of the elements kind of pop off the page. And you'll see me continue to do that with the circles. And you'll notice that the circle that is only a, it, it kind of has a hole in the middle. It's just kind of the outline of the circle. I kind of wanted to move that really and kind of shadow that complete thing. And so you'll see that that gets completely shattered and moves to the back um, of this whole page when I do that. I decided that I wanted to outline the piece of dictionary with the word courage with black fabric castell with the thin point. I 
and now there's that gray marker that I'm going to continue to use to put shadows around these circles. See, I'm doing that same shadow technique around the dictionary definition of courage. And I tore another piece of a book out in order to give her some clothing and cover up that boo boo that I made uh, trying to shadow with that darker color. I just added it onto the page with a little bit of score tape. and outlined it with the pit pen as well. The circles looked a little empty, so I decided that I would look up on thesaurus.com and find some words that uh, meant courage and add those to the other three circles. And then you're going to see me highlight some certain areas of these words with the white Sakura Jelly Roll pen. And at that point, I felt that this journal page was complete, my journal page Courage. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again with another step-by-step -step art journal page.